all right guys welcome back to the channel my name is randall this is the mcclures we react we review we make fun of we laugh at stuff over here links of course are down in the description if you would like to help support the channel uh follow me on social media or you can shop mcclures.com that's a website that i created to sell american products try to do something to help people who actually produce in this country and to help other americans in their small businesses um we are going to be getting into it today. We got an interview coming up with Tim Ballard interviewing Donald Trump. I am curious to see um, if Trump introduces any plans when he gets into office to combat sex trafficking and um, if he's got any legitimate plans for it. Leslie's in the building. Howdy, howdy. How goes it? So yeah, let's get into this. So Tim Ballard interviews Donald J. Trump. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Tim Ballard podcast rolling into episode four. So stick with us as we enter into this episode. Now, this is a special episode. I had the opportunity to uh, interview a president of the United States, a former president, President Donald Trump, about human trafficking. He hosted a, a screening of Sound of Freedom, and then we talked afterwards. Now, I want to say a few things entering into this, because a lot of... Oh, that's interesting. So I know that Trump hosted the Sound of Freedom watch party or whatever he did. Uh, and obviously Tim and Jim Caviezel, who is the, uh, plays Tim in the movie, was there. Uh, it's interesting that their podcast happened right after watching the movie. I'm assuming that Trump watched it as well. So we might get some fresh takes on um, on his thoughts. So it's going to be interesting. People said, I'm not going to even support you anymore, Tim, because you met with Donald Trump. I, I don't understand this attitude. I, I really don't. Um, now, you, I'm coming from, from a position of trying to rescue children. Okay, and I will partner with anyone and everyone in the world. <laughs> if you want to help me rescue kids, then I'm going to be on your team. Uh, and I learned this lesson about the, uh, the, the people around Donald Trump uh, when I was invited to brief him in the White House a few years ago. Uh, and I had an expertise and still do on the border. I spent 10 years as a special agent on the border on a, as an undercover operator on the southern border. So I understand very well how it works. And I... I understood during those 10 years that it's not political. The Clinton administration built more of the wall than any other administration. It was never partisan. We all understood that when you maintain the flow of people, you get to rescue people. And in, in, in particular, you get to rescue children. It's a very basic concept. It shouldn't take that, that, that long for people to understand. They, they pretend easy. they don't understand it, I think, because they don't like that Donald Trump touched it, that Donald Trump made it a big deal. The bottom line is this, guys. Children are being trafficked into the United States, okay? And when they get into the United States, it's very scary because we're the number one country for consuming child exploitation material. So you don't want to be a lost child in this country. And the last hope they have if they're being smuggled or trafficked to the southern border is at that port of entry. The walls force the traffickers to take the kids there. We're trained women and men in uniform can identify and rescue them. I've seen it, I've been part of that. And that's basically what I said to the president when asked about human trafficking on the southern border. I left the White House and within hours, I got a phone call from our CFO at Operation Underground Railroad who said, Tim, we just lost over a thousand recurring donors. These are people that knew we were rescuing kids. They didn't stop donating to us. They didn't stop becoming recurring donors because we stopped rescuing kids. They stopped becoming recurring donors because I met with Donald Trump. I don't even That's know that crazy. they even necessarily disagreed with what I said because who would disagree with that? It's very basic. It's very obvious. If you care about kids and you put that first, you're going to agree with the basic concept of two plus two equals four, how border walls and enforcement works to rescue children. Isn't that absolutely insane? So a thousand people after seeing Tim Ballard meet with the current president who support would be helpful in rescuing children their trump derangement syndrome is so bad 
They're like, oh, I no longer want to support the rescuing of children because he had a conversation with Trump. That's absolutely delusional. Children. Delusional. I told my CFO that I wasn't going to respond to them because they were begging me to call them, call the donors, tell them what you told us, that you would say the same thing to any president, to any administration, the same thing, the same truth, because it's about rescuing kids. And I decided not to call any of them because they told me something very important, which was that they hate one person or one party more than they love rescuing children from a life of rape. That's pretty sick. That's pretty sad. It is. I don't even kind of want that energy near me. Um, so that was my introduction to the divisiveness around one party or one person and just partisan politics in general. So with that, because some of you are probably tuning in for the first time to the Tim Ballard podcast because you want to watch this interview with, with Donald Trump, we're going to talk about the issues around children because that's what I want to talk to him about. I would love to interview President Biden. I would love to interview any past president or politician from any side to get your perspective on how best to fight human trafficking. Now, my story, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time and don't even understand what it is, because again, I think a lot of you will be watching this podcast for the first time, and it may be your first introduction. Like I said, I spent 12 years with the U.S. government as a special agent, 10 of those years on the southern border. In 2013, I got involved in a couple of cases that um, I overextended myself. I went beyond what um, the jurisdictional limitations of my job allowed me to do. Um, and one of those cases was in Haiti with a little boy named Gardy Marty who had been kidnapped, um, U.S. citizen kidnapped in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And the other one was a case that I was supposed to be consulting on only and training on in, in Colombia. Uh, both of those cases, it was determined, weren't um, hitting the requirements as a, of a U.S. case, and I was told to come home and shut down. Now, you can learn about that, the, the case that happened in Haiti uh, through a documentary called Operation Two Saint on Amazon Prime. You can also go to PragerU, and there's a whole uh, series called Light in the Darkness that just came out a few weeks ago that tells the story also of what happened in Haiti. If you want to know what happened in the Columbia operation, watch Sound of Freedom. It's, it's, it's a depiction based on the truth of what happened in that operation. So I understand, well, I don't understand American policy on this, but so for the Columbia operation, he had to come home because there was no U.S. citizens involved and there was no U.S. children. But for the Haiti operation, didn't he just say that it was an American child who was kidnapped? So why would that operation not meet their qualifications? I'd like to check more into that Africa or the, I'm sorry, into the Haiti uh, operation. Another documentary by Angel Studios will be coming out very soon called Triple Take, which is the documentary form of Sound of Freedom. You can see the actual footage. Some of the real footage, of course, you see at the end of the film, Sound of Freedom. So that's basically, in a nutshell, my story, my life purpose, the objective that I've always set to do is rescue more children, help more children, um, whether it's rescuing them or providing for them, getting them adopted. Uh, my wife and I adopted two children that we rescued on that very first Haiti operation. And again, you can learn about that at the PragerU series, Light in the Darkness, or uh, Operation Toussaint on Amazon Prime. So I want you to have that understanding. So w when you've gone undercover as many times as I have, and you've seen the, the worst of the worst, believe me when I tell you, Politics is the last thing you care about. You're, you will go and talk to anyone who is in charge of something that might be able to deploy resources to rescue children. So I want to yeah. ask all of you, put your politics away. Is there one issue left on the table? I used to think so until they politicized the border and, and they're politicizing sound of freedom. These are real kids and they deserve to be respected and their stories de deserve to be respected. And, and everybody, the Guardian, Rolling Stone, Everybody else who's come out against uh, this story, you owe an apology to those children. I don't care. You think you're hurting me? You're not hurting me. You think you're hurting Jim Caviezel, Eduardo? You know, you're not hurting. We're, we're big boys. You're hurting children. Facts. You're disrespecting their story and you owe them an apology. Facts. And they'll be coming out and telling their story very soon because they're, they're, a lot of them are dying to do that. So it's, it's pretty Facts. disgusting what, what you've all done um, and because you're just hurting kids. You're, you're either... <laughs> Wittingly or unwittingly, running interference for pedophiles and human traffickers, that's not a good place to be. 
I, I, I want to give you the it's benefit the team of the doubt you that, be on. Unwittingly that you're doing something else. I've talked about that and I will in other places. Uh, but the bottom line is this. I want you to listen to someone who very well might be the next president of the United States. Okay. And I want you to learn from what this person did and how he responded when he was president of the United States to the plight of vulnerable children. Put politics aside. The kids deserve way better than you putting politics in front of this. Put it out of the way, clear the road, clear your head, and just listen to this interview and see if some good ideas are discussed about how we together can rescue children. Thank you Max. so much and God bless. Max. Hey, everybody, welcome to a very special episode of the Tim Ballard Podcast. Here we are at one of the top golf clubs in the nation at Bedminster, here with the 45th President of the United States, Mr. Donald Trump. Thank Mr. You President, very much. thank you. Well, thank you. We for just, being our guest. We just saw a great movie and uh, unbelievable. And Jim, you were really incredible. Thank you. Thank and you, you in real life were really incredible. So yeah. I want to. Thank you on behalf of a lot of people. Fantastic job. Mm. Thank you. What was your favorite scene of the film? I think the start, the ending, and maybe the result was uh, what I liked. That was a great result. That was a hard-earned result, though. The two young children, you have, you have thousands and hundreds of thousands out there. It's so sad to see. Yeah. But it was really something very special. It's been a great success, the movie, and now I see why. Thank you so much. There, there's a scene in the film that uh, at this part, the southern border at the port of entry, yeah. they filmed that scene when the van comes across and we, we get the little boy out of there. That's a very true story. They filmed on location at the Calexico, California, east port of entry. And when they filmed this, it, we, we weren't struggling as we are today. It, it's almost like God waited for the right time to drop this because yeah. the, the, the whole film kicks off with kids being trafficked into the United States. Um, what, what's your perspective on, on, on the border now and where it was during your administration? So, as you know, the border was uh, very uh, successful, relatively speaking, at least. It was uh, the most successful it's ever been. It's uh, incredibly bad right now. It's worse. At, you can magnify it times 10 or 12 times, they say. It's so sad to see what's happened. And that includes trafficking. It includes drugs. It includes everything. People coming in from... All over the world, they're pouring into our country. They're coming from prisons. They're coming from mental institutions. They're terrorists. We have a terrible group of people running our country, and it's never been like this. The border's never been worse. You guys would understand that as well as I would. Uh, the border's never been more open. And when you have open borders like that, you have trafficking at a level that you've never seen before. So much different than when you and I previously met. And uh, very sad to see it's gone so bad. We'll turn it around, but it's it's really very terrible to see. So when you were in charge of the border, I remember them saying that your policies were both racist, uh, the most uh, no compassion from President Trump on, on these foreign children. And I look today and I just I, I, I'm in awe because I, the only compassionate policy is enforcement. Yeah. Uh, these children. Facts. Jim, what you were you were telling me you saw like, the testimony of Miss Rodas, right, from uh, yes. Health and Human Services. April what, what, 26. Yeah, tell, tell us about that. Well, she gave her testimony. In the, Whistleblower, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, she's submitted uh, evidence as well. And the next day in the media, there was, it wasn't even covered. It, like it never happened. I think the, the media I didn't hear is that. responsible as well as ignoring the South border. We don't have a country without a border. Yeah. 85,000, Mr. President, 85,000 unaccompanied minors in, during the Joe Biden administration mm. showed up and were released into the belly of the United States, which is the number one consumer of child exploitation material in the world. No background checks. The kids are released to whoever. It's more difficult to adopt a cat from a shelter than it is to go get a kid mm. out of Health and Human Services. Mm. Um, That's crazy. How do we fix this when you're back in? Just for the people in the back so you understand what he just said. In America, it's harder to adopt a cat from a shelter than it is for a smuggler to go to HHS and pick up their next victim. Wow. 
Well, you need the policy, number one. You have to close up the borders, and we let people in when they go through a legal process. And we had that working really well. If they would have done nothing, the borders were just getting stronger and stronger, and from a human trafficking standpoint. And uh, we find mostly women, but children very big also. But it's women and children. Uh, nobody's seen like I, I think I can say this, that nobody's ever seen it like it is today. And three years ago, we had it down to a level that they hadn't seen for many, many decades. It was the lowest it's been. I think it recorded history. And now it's probably the worst it's ever been. Nobody's ever seen anything like what's happening in our country and to our country right now. Now, you, you had implemented a policy known in the media as remain in Mexico. Yeah. I think within the first week of, 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 of Biden coming in, he he abolished Remain in Mexico. What, what was that, and, and what were the effects of, of, of Joe Biden? Well, we had a lot of things, Tim. We had uh, walls that were going up at a level that uh, were really rapidly going. You know, we 28,000 Mexican to soldiers the on their side. So we had 11 major court cases. I won all of those cases, and we started building the wall that delayed it. We started building the wall. We actually took the military at it. The military uh, gave us the money at my demand, I guess you'd have to say, at my demand. And because I considered it like an invasion, I call this an invasion of our country. It is. And very bad for the people coming in, very bad for just about everybody. So we built hundreds of miles of wall. We renovated a lot, too. And uh, we did a real job. And then we had another 200 miles that we were going to build, which is far more than I anticipated building. But we had areas that were weak, and we built the wall for it. And all they had to do was install it. Could have been done in about three weeks. And uh, they didn't want to do that. They want to have open borders and open borders are very dangerous. And as Jim said, uh, when you have open borders and bad elections and a lot of other things, but when you have open borders, you just don't have a country. And that's what we have right now. I never understood uh, how the wall got politicized. I spent 10 years on that board, as you saw in the film. Right. And the Clinton administration built as much of the wall as, as mm -hmm. anyone else had, because mm -hmm. we all understood there was a time when we understood that walls meant security equal children get rescued. You know, it's their last hope that they might get rescued by trained individuals who the traffickers are forced to take them to that port of entry. And it's just it's so sad that, that I actually seen a news report yesterday. So the Biden administration, they pretend to be against walls. But I just seen a video yesterday on Rumble. Uh, down in San Diego, there's a border wall that goes across the beach and out into the ocean a little bit. Um, it's been there for a very, very long time. Uh, just on the other side of it, it looks like Biden is building California a brand new wall. They already have walls. They're already secure. But California is getting additional walls and Texas is defending for them or fending for themselves and can't get any help from the administration. But if you're a liberal and you want a wall, no problem. It's no problem. They've politicized this. Why do you think it's, it's obvious? I've testified before Congress. I've testified, I testified before then Senator Kamala Harris, who's now the border czar. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they can claim ignorance. They know what's happening. These children are being abused and brought in. Why do they want open borders? What do they get out of this? Well, nobody can understand that because uh, it's so obvious. You know, I always was saying when I was campaigning in 2016 and in 2016. Nobody says it because they don't want to call Biden a pedophile. But he is. That's why he's okay with it. Because it just increases his selection. The creepy weirdo. 2020, two things that work. Wheels and walls. They'll never change. You can wheel and a wall. <laughs> they can be ancient. It doesn't matter. They'll have new forms of computer every week. That's true. Week. Wheels you know, and walls. come up with a great computer system and uh, it's obsolete in about two weeks. But wheels and walls. And they know the walls work and they have worked. And uh, we kept... But we kept, I, if, it, if we didn't have the walls, we wouldn't have had the record setting success that we had. I guess there's only one reason, you know, you say, uh, what could it be? Why would they want to have open borders? Why would they not want to complete everything? And uh, maybe they hate our country. Maybe they have ideas for the country that are a lot different than what they should be. But 
what they've done on the southern border and the borders generally coming into our country. It's uh, not acceptable. And the people of our country aren't going to allow it. It's, it's an amazing thing. And I can tell you this. I, I love the story of Sound of Freedom because you see real children from Central America. And I can tell you this, that with your policies and enforcement, the traffickers were de-incentivized from taking children like sure. Miguel and Rocio. Because why take them if they have to remain in Mexico? Yeah. Why take them if the walls pose too big of a risk for them to get the kids in? So your policies, and the world needs to understand this, rescued, in my professional opinion, and mine is a professional one, uh, hundreds of thousands or more children were rescued from a life of being kidnapped, trafficked, raped, and it's, 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 it's that. Did we just hear that? For all the slow retards in the back who don't want to protect children, who haven't supported the film Sound of Freedom, Trump's strict border policy, in his professional opinion, could have saved 100,000 children from being victimized and graped. We're on YouTube, so we have to use the fake word. Um, absolutely crazy, folks. Absolutely crazy. And the fact that nobody cares is kind of scary. Simple that policies really can save children. And it's devastating uh, to see what's happening. Another way I think that you saved a lot of children that people don't talk about is because um, we're seeing the results now of what you did. You put three people on the bench. Mm -hmm. Tell me about those three and why you chose them. Well, we have yeah. three great Supreme Court justices, and they have made tremendous decisions over the last period of time especially over the last two weeks, actually, and uh, having to do not just with what we talk about, but education, as you know. Now, the most qualified people get into the colleges. It's uh, very discriminatory the other way. It's actually the opposite of what people had originally thought. But now, if you get the great marks and the great scores and everything else, you get into the college. You're not left behind for somebody else that doesn't have the same talent or work or whatever it may be. So that was a big decision, but we have had a lot of decisions over the last two months that have been amazing, including having to do with religious liberty, which I know affects you two very much. But the border itself is got to be—it's uh, got to be strengthened. We're losing our country. I think we—I think you'll have maybe close to 15 million people over the last two years. 15 million. I think that's the real number. You know, they say two million and three million and four million. I think it's going to be close to 15 million people having poured into our country. We have no idea where they come from. Between the the overturning of, Ho of Hobbs, of, of Roe versus Wade and the Hobbs decision. 15 million people have come in during the Biden administration. I know they throw around, throw around a lot of big numbers, but 15 million people. I think Los Angeles is like 10 million people. New York's like 5 million people or something. This is 15 million people. Where are they going to go? Where are all these houses they're going to live in? Where are all these jobs? How is the country supposed to function? Crazy. Vision, which wouldn't have happened without your appointments. Uh, and with the border enforcement, which is, we just, we know has rescued how countless children. I mean, how does it feel to have gone in and in four short years really rescued what could be millions of children? How does that, how does that feel? And the other question, how does it feel to be, have been indicted unfairly twice, maybe a third time? Could be fourth. Too. Probably for doing these things, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know why else they're doing it. It could be that. I mean, it could be a lot of things. It's, uh, look, we believe in borders. We believe in all of the things we've been discussing tonight, and it's for a lot of reasons. But uh, the people of the country get it, and we're leading by so much. I mean, I've never had popularity like this because there is just a large group of people, far greater than 50 percent. I can tell you that, and you people know that better than anybody. Uh, when you see what they've done in a short period of time to Budweiser, that tells you a little bit about some of the people that we're talking about, perhaps, uh, what they did and. Uh, probably one of the worst abuses of a company that anyone's ever seen. That had to be the dumbest commercial ever made, but I think they lost hundreds of billions of dollars yes. of value. It's the craziest <laughs> thing. 
And the person that did it is going around now complaining about they didn't treat her well. They didn't treat her well. Or the dumbest him well commercial. Or her well. I'm not sure exactly how to ever define seen. it. And it's uh, incredible. No, there's a great group of people in this country, a vast, vast majority that understand what you're about, understand what uh, you did is so great. And that's why your movie is such a big success. It's an incredible movie. It's really, I mean, everything's entertainment. This is much more than entertainment. This is uh, knowledge that can lead to something very important because it is bad out there. It's nasty out there when you think. I'm watching some of those scenes in the movie, and I, I don't know, I probably, uh, you would know better than anybody, do they capture them? Is it actually worse in real life? Or is it actually better in real life? It's probably as bad as it looks. It's probably it's bad. even worse. It's as bad or worse, I can promise yeah. that. Every, everything you see happen to those kids in that movie happened to those kids that yeah. they depict in that, in that movie. Um, so do you think these indictments have hurt you at all? Because it seems like every time it happens, your numbers go up. Well, they're fake, and uh, people understand that. We have, yeah. We've done a great job. And a lot of it is, as you say, we've done things that they don't want. Is a radical, but it's saving kids. What you've done—that's yeah, what I don't understand. We've, we've done that, but we've done a lot of other things, and <laughs> having to do many things. Some people don't like to see that. It's hard to believe, which means probably they just don't want to see our country be great again. Uh, we have a very simple phrase: "Make America great again," or even "America first." And numerous phrases—they're all boil down to the same thing. But it really is—it's uh, pretty amazing when you see what's happening in our country right now. Our country's going to hell. Hmm and uh, we have to stop it. They have a lot of bad ideas going, not only on the border, not only in terms of trafficking, which is a big deal, but in just about every other thing they're doing, their ideas are bad, their policy is bad. I want to bring in a, a special guest as we close out here, because we have a unique op opportunity. I think we might have in this room right now the next president of the United States and the next president of Mexico. Is in, it might be in this room. Eduardo Verastegui, who's also the producer of Sound of Freedom, is contemplating a run. Come up here, Ronald. I want to know, Hermano. I want to know what you two, if you, in 2024, if you both win this, assuming you make the decision to run and win, what will you do for America and Mexico? We've talked a lot about the board. There's a lot of issues we share in common. What would you do? And what, what would you do? And what would you want to work with with, 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 uh, with President Trump? Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Mr. President, for opening the door of your house to stream the movie Sound of Freedom. Oh, thank you very We're much. very grateful to you. We're very grateful for everything you have done for life. You are... Before he keeps going, that would be very interesting if this gentleman ran to be president of Mexico because him and Trump could work hand in hand. And if we actually had Mexico cooperating with America full-blown, we could probably help clean up Mexico from, of the cartels and get that country popping you know what i mean mexico should be shaking and moving being our southern neighboring uh country uh they should be popping off not dwelling in the squalor of fucking cartel life are the uh, most amazing leader around the world leading by example defending life human life thank you i'm not a politician i'm an outsider but you inspire me to at least think about running for president. I'm still thinking about it. I'm praying about it. I'm asking the people of Mexico to pray for me. I'm fasting. I'm praying because I want to do God's will. But if the answer is yes, you will know very soon. But if the answer is yes, together we're stronger. Mm -hmm. We're not just neighbors. We're brothers and sisters. When the good people of Mexico and the good people of America meet, sound of freedom happens. We save lives. When the bad people of Mexico and the bad people of America meet, child trafficking happens. Facts. Drugs, cartels, Facts. cancer, death, the mm -hmm. culture of death. Facts. We represent the culture of life. Together, we can win. Let's make America and Mexico great together. Let's make America and Mexico free again. And Eduardo, for the last question, I want to let you ask, hypothetically, if you were president, right now, and you're looking at the president-elect in 2024, what, what's the question you would ask President Trump, your neighbor president? Hmm. How can we end child trafficking and how can we end drugs? Because there is a demand, there is a supply. How can we kill the demand and the supply together?
So we make up the southern border. And when we close that southern border, that's the number one place in terms of drugs and in terms of child trafficking. Facts. And if we work together with Mexico, as I've been working with Mexico, I worked with Mexico, but now there's no real relationship to what's happening with trafficking or drugs. But if we work together, we'll create a border that will make it very, very difficult for anybody in terms of trafficking drugs, people coming in that uh, maybe shouldn't be there. Uh, you know, many people come across and they think it's going to be wonderful and good people and they die trying to come across. It's a horrible thing that's happening. So we'd work with Mexico and really create a real border. And that would do a lot for trafficking and a lot for stopping the drugs. Excellent. Thank you guys so much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank We're you, honored Mr. to President. be here. Thank you for opening your home again. And we hope together we can make it a better world. So thank you so much. And thank you. And we'll be back next time with the Tim Ballard podcast. Thank you thank so you, much, Tim. Mr. President. Thank you. Great thank you. Que viva Estados Unidos. Que viva. Que viva. Que viva Mexico. Que viva. Que viva Mexico. Um, but very interesting. Very interesting. If that gentleman was if that gentleman was to run for president in mexico um someone who generally looks um serious about doing stuff and working with the u.s uh that would be an un unbelievable partnership if uh if we were on the same page if we were on the same page for sure for sure. But very interesting stuff, folks. Very interesting stuff. So we just wrapped up the interview with Tim Ballard interviewing Donald J. Trump at, I think they said Bed Bedminster, not Mar-a-Lago, at Bedminster. Um, they did a screening of the movie Sound of Freedom. And I'm going to reemphasize, if you haven't seen the movie Sound of Freedom, you do support pedophilia. So, I'm just saying, you need to go see the movie immediately, support the movie in what way you can. Uh, if you can't go see it, then buy a ticket for somebody who can. Um, we need to get the word out there. We need to spread the word. The scourge on society uh, is getting to an all-time high. And it's going to take everybody to save the kids. Which is why it's on the thumbnail. Save the kids. That's the whole point. Save the kids. Save the kids. Save the kids. Uh, if you're on the live, we appreciate you for tapping in. If you want to hit the thumbs up for me, that definitely helps. If you want to join or follow, we would appreciate that as well. Links are down in the description if you want to support or shop McClure's.com. We are going to post this as a video. So if you're tuning in when we post it as a video, stop by the lives. We're going to keep going on the live, but for the video, later, later, bye.